morning. One of our best guests we could have join us, John Alley with Woodlawn Hospital, the CEO. Good morning, John. Good morning. Pleasure to have you here in studio. We're talking board meeting. We're talking class. board meeting. Yes, we are. We do that uh, every month. Uh, moved it up a week this, this year or this month because of Christmas next week. So not a lot went over. We're just going to reflect on the year. Um, you know, one of the two major topics we had basically yesterday's board meeting was we had a fairly substantial net operating loss for the year. So, you know, what causes that? What are we doing to prevent it? And, uh, you know, right now we got an operating loss of about $2.3 million, Big number. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you can imagine everybody gets a little tense on that. So what causes that? A couple items caused it. When we look at our net patient revenue, which is, you know, what we bill out, less contractuals, uh, we're about a million dollars under budget in that. So our volumes were down a little bit. So that helps identify part of that $2 million loss. But the biggest one is we're self-funded on our health insurance. So if our employees go see a doctor or have surgery, you know, we don't really have an insurance company that pays for that. We pay for that out of operations. And we had $2.1 million over budget in that. And unfortunately, that's only in 16 individuals. So we had some really sick people this year. You know, so is that devastating to the hospital? Absolutely. But it's even more devastating to those employees because they've got lost work. And, you know, it, it just bad year, you know, from a healthcare perspective. So, yeah, it's a big loss. We had operating loss for the year. But the good part, if there is one in that, is we know what caused it. We can look at two factors. We know exactly, you know, what prompted that loss. And the downside is nothing we can do about it. You know, I mean, if somebody's sick, they're sick. That We, we can't prevent that. And it would have been nice had the sickness been on other patients other than our employees because we were down in, in our revenue also. So we kind of had the double whammy. You know, the community was, was well, but we had the sickness within our employees. So sure. those two combined, you know, almost was $3 million under budget in those two. So that makes up that uh, $2.3 million pretty quick. So mm -hmm. know what it is. Uh, hard to control it. We're hoping next year as we look to, you know, do that predictions is that we got staff back, you know, healthy, back to work, so we don't experience that again next year. Mm -hmm. The other thing we had yesterday, we have four new providers coming on board with the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Dr. Checkley uh, will be in Argus, uh, and uh, she is family practice physician. Basically, it's taken a while. You know, Dr. Haste retired about a year ago, so this is replacing Dr. Haste at the Argus Clinic. So uh, glad to have her on board. Uh, she's excited to be here. Hardest part right now is she's trying to learn our uh, electronic medical records. So uh, kind of taking a while to get that done. I, I'm sure next uh, week or so she'll be fully implemented on that and we're anticipating it right after the first year seeing a full schedule for her so if you're in the argus area you know looking for a physician absolutely give dr checkley a call we can get you worked in and uh, get established up there yeah i know when talking with her at the meet and greet on tuesday she said she's really excited to be uh back working in uh, in rural health care yes and getting it, familiar with the patients yeah it's uh you know she did a stint i think a little bit in uh with the ready med market in up in south bend and just not something she enjoys, so we're glad to have her on board and looking forward to a long-term relationship with her. Sure. Uh, we also have Dr. Pullman, who comes in. He's a surgeon, uh, helping Dr. Nile out in our... So he works a week, off a week, and uh, just brings a ton of experience to, to our organization. He was one of the chief trauma surgeons at Methodist Hospital in Indianapolis, so he's got just a ton of knowledge. He's a, a teacher in, with IU Health. So, you know, he's coming in, not only, you know, helping out Dr. Nile, but staff just loves it because as he's doing a case, he's teaching. Mm -hmm. And it's just making their knowledge base greater. And that's just a benefit of our, our uh, patients come in. Got a high-level education going on and just glad to have him on board. Uh, Dr. Cly is a new OBGYN from the Fort Wayne market and starting to see new patients here in Rochester. And he's kind of a dynamo, uh, very energetic, very excited about being here. And, and again, just another really nice addition to our staff. And then last but not least, we have Phyllis Ingham, who is a nurse practitioner, and she's operating out of the Fulton County Medical Clinic uh, downtown Rochester. And again, seeing new patients. So, you know, we got, uh, for a while there, we were a little low on family practice, but with Dr. Checkley and Phyllis coming in to pick that up, you know, OBGYN and the surgeon, we're pretty well up to where we need to be right now. Uh, I do know probably in the next five to six years, I'm going to have a couple other physicians talk about retirement. So, you know, once I get one spot filled, it seems like I got <laughs> two more I got to work on. Mm -hmm. And it does take time. It's hard to really recruit physicians to a rural community. They, they're looking for the big city. They're, you know, so we've got, what can we offer them? that would entice them here. So it takes a while, but I'm very pleased with who we have and looking forward to them 
long-term relationships with all of them and staff absolutely loves them and you know you had the opportunity to meet them on tuesday uh just really nice people uh, they're very down to earth and are dedicated to that rural market and that's what we're looking for yeah, yeah good a, a good group to have and you know i know we're talking with them uh, one of the main things we talked about was staying up to date on all practices and you know obviously that's that's the norm and yes know, they said what, what we're finding here is that uh, here in Rochester, you're getting, we're running into a lot of lifelong learners, people that just really have a thirst for knowledge in terms of being the best physicians they could possibly Right. Be, which I think is a real attest to what you guys do at Woodlawn. Yeah, it's one of the themes that we keep hearing now is, you know, they, we want to move to that center of excellence. And the easiest way to do that is I've got buy-in from the medical staff and our employees. And that's now everybody's saying, we're going to get there. You know, 2020 is our first step to become that center of excellence. So we've raised the bar of our expectations of our staff and our physicians, and everyone is on board. We're going to get there. So I'm really excited. You know, it's being in healthcare for several years. Sometimes, you know, you lose that excitement as you get into it. Uh, this kind of renews that for all of us. We're really excited. The board's excited. We're going to move to that center of excellence. What it takes to get there we're going to do and uh, so i'm looking for some big things 2020 2021 as we make some changes some enhancements to how we do things and i think it's going to be for the benefit of our patients and the clients that we serve sure absolutely and then uh, we finally got into the the financials for november and we were hoping to skip those because it was not a very good month uh you know we really i guess it's a good thing there wasn't many sick people in the community in november so good for them not so good for us Mm -hmm. uh, I had total patient revenue just a little over $11 million. We wrote off 6.8, and again, that's that contractual. That's our agreements we have with our payers that we can bill what we want, but they kind of pay us what they want to pay us. So we wrote off 6.7, so it left us $4.4 million, basically cash in the bank to spend that we got during the month, and we spent $4.9 million of that. So uh, we had uh, then some non-operating revenue, which is stuff that basically we segregate out. It has not direct patient care of about 304000 So even after that, we still had a loss for the month of 209000 So, you know, 2019 has just been a really bad year for the hospital. You know, as we explained, the $2.1 million operating loss, uh, hard to recover from that. So we know we're not going to recover that in December. Uh, right now, December does appear to be a fairly good month. It's, uh, you know, one of the factors that I look at is, you know, number of uh, patients we have in occupied beds. In November, we had 9.3 average daily census. 11 is kind of my magic number. If I know I've got 11 patients, you know, on an average, we're probably going to have a profitable month. And as of this morning, we're about 13.6. So it looks good if we can kind of maintain that census through the end of December. We should have a profitable December. Um, so it would be nice to close the year out on a, you know, in the black for the month. But we've kind of written off the year. Just We're too far down. We just cannot recover from that big of a loss. So, again, some exciting things uh, we got going for 2020. Um, you know, bringing, we're trying to bring on some new services that we think is going to enhance our revenue a little bit. But the key is they're not just the revenue enhancement. It's what do we need to do to make it better for our patients. So we're looking at some technology in, in 2020 that we think is going to be a very major improvement to the, how we deliver health care to the folks of, of uh, Fulton County and around us. So we're excited about that. Still working the details on this. I can't get into a lot of it. Uh, Absolutely. You know, as you're trying to negotiate purchasing of equipment, you kind of want to keep your cards close to your chest and not a lot of that out. But uh, looking pretty good, fairly optimistic, have some new technology bring into the community starting uh, early next year. So kind of excited as we look to 2020. Yeah, we'll keep an eye out for 2020. 20, yes, well. you know, it's one of those to... preview of upcoming attractions, I la you know, for lack of a better term. And so. it'll be here before we know it. It well. will be here <laughs> fairly quickly. Yeah. So, you know, and on that note, uh, you know, as we get into the holiday seasons, you know, uh, I've said it every year, we don't want to see you by accident. So, you know, be careful uh, with all the holiday festivities going on, you know, we're tempted to do things we shouldn't do. So, you know, if you get to that point, please get a designated driver. We, we don't want to see you or any family members by accident. Have a good time, but do it responsibly. So we're looking forward to next year and get through these holidays. We're looking forward to it, too. Again, John Alley, the CEO of Woodlawn Hospital, joins us this morning on Giant FM. John, from the board meeting last night, anything else Anything else we missed worth noting? Not really. That was pretty well. Yeah. Kind of a short meeting. We really concentrated, like I said, on what caused that loss for 2019. Got that identified, 
trying to figure ways to you know fix it mm-hmm. uh you know hopefully next year from a revenue perspective we see a little more uptick in revenue i think as we look to again new procedures new uh things that we can do in the hospital you know that's going to be some new revenue that's going to offset that a little bit so looking forward optimistic about 2020 absolutely once again john alley joins us this morning on giant fm john is the ceo of woodlawn hospital thanks so much for joining us john appreciate it my pleasure thank you